Hello. All right. I'm going to hop right into it because if you're joining me, thank you. Um, <laughs> okay, so the last time I came on live, um, I said I was going to come on here and I was going to talk about um, tattoos and different parts of the mosaic law. And so I'm just going to jump into it because it's a lot. So, if you're a Bible reader, uh, even if you're not, if you read your Bible, the Bible, you know, is inspired by God, and it was written by those that worshipped him, those that sincerely wanted to know him, that got to know him, and the different events uh, from the Old Covenant to the New Covenant, which foretold the coming of Christ uh, once he arrived and also his death and his resurrection and that he will be coming again. So it's a lot more. It's a whole lot. It's a whole lot. But I'm going to touch on the segment and I'm going to try and keep it simple. So I always take and put the videos on YouTube. So if you want to watch it on YouTube, you just type in Dynamic Girl Beauty on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And you can watch the videos. And, you know, basically, if you can, try to take notes. You can look up the scriptures yourself. And also, you can do your own research. You can go to jw.org, look more into, you know, whatever you have questions about, and just go from there. So, basically, the Mosaic Law. So, I was doing my own personal research and reading. And while I was doing that, um, actually, I'll tell y'all my story because I'm an artist. I love art. I'm very colorful. I love color. I love shapes, all those things. So if I didn't know what I know or knew when I finally got away from home and <laughs> on my own, yeah, I would look completely different than what I do right now completely different you know what i'm gonna take and put my mic on this i didn't realize i didn't have a mic on i hope y'all can hear me just fine Doo -doo. so yeah as i was saying i would look completely different today than what i look like right now and the main reason being uh because like i said i like art i'm an artist and you know when we're younger and everything and you know you finally can get away from home and you can do what you want to do and nobody can tell you what to do and you ain't got nobody watching you and all that good stuff i mean you got somebody watching you but you know my mama was miles and miles like five hours away so <laughs> Uh oh, I almost dropped it. So that was the first for me. That was the first for me. So it was a lot of stuff that, you know, I could have did that I wanted to do that I didn't do because, well, I had a Bible trained conscious. So it wasn't perfected. It's still not perfected, but I did have one. So. For my conscience at the time, I worked on improving it. And even though my research, like it told me it was okay um, to get tattoos and everything, I personally chose to stick to like the stickers because I honestly, personally, I probably have like this whole side, my whole left side tatted up. I would have sleeves, I would have piercings, tongue piercings, lip piercings, eyebrow piercings, nose piercings. That's me. Now, it does speak against obsessive piercings. And personally, and I mean, I'm not speaking against 
a person who have piercings. I'm not judging anybody, okay? So don't take it out of context. But when you pierce your skin and you pierce, like, it have to heal. You know, even like, I have this. I have my ear. That's the only piercings I really have. I have my ears pierced. And it have to be properly taken care of and have, you know, the right everything so it can heal properly. Because everybody is different or whatever. But y'all know. I ain't got to go off into that. I'm talking too much now. So, excessive piercings. <laughs> So uh, you have to take into consideration, like, if you want to do those things, the consequences that still come with it, even if it's okay, you know, um, that's the best way to put it. But scripturally, I'm going to show you why it was considered wrong at that time. And I'm just, it's, it's a lot. Okay. So bear with me. So the Bible, right, speaks of the only true God, speaks of Jehovah. Um, you can say Yahweh, uh, Ahovah, Jehovah, it, it, Jehovah. We're talking about the Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, creator of all things, creator, right? Not talking about no deities. We're not talking about, we're not even talking about Jesus, and Jesus is considered a God, but he's not Jehovah. And when you read your Bible, he never claims to be Jehovah. He never, it, the Bible even says that he never gave way to a seizure to even consider himself a God like Jehovah. But he came because his father sent him and he sent them for a purpose. So in Ecclesiastes, here, let me go to it. I'm just flipping through the pages. I'll go to Ecclesiastes. And just keep this in mind, like with any decision that you make in your life and everything and what you do, that this scripture. And it says also, you know, the Bible teaches to do all things for God's glory, not for men. Because when you do stuff for men, that's the trip up that's the problem and we all can fall victim to it we all can fall victim to peer pressure but in ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13 it says the conclusion of the matter everything having been heard is fear the true god and keep his commandments for this is the whole obligation of men for the true god will judge every deed including every hidden thing as to whether it is good or bad so then i'm going to go ahead and turn to you know what and i had did a lot of research too because like the book of the law like jehovah he want people to serve him out of a complete heart out of sincerity out of you know, godly devotion, and that means sincerity, and Jehovah is a jealous God, oh, I'm burping, y'all, I'm sorry, and then being a jealous God, Jehovah has always been that, and so now, you know, with everything in the Bible, we have time periods, right, so Anyone who's paying attention know we're in the time of the end. And in being in the time of the end, the appointed time for Jesus to be on his throne and his presence is here. And also Jehovah is on his throne. So the appointed time where wicked spirit <laughs> creatures is basically dominating and ruling over a majority of things a majority of government and their influence they are being removed and jehovah is moving things and moving people and 
establishing his power and his glory. So basically those who do not want to serve Jehovah, those who choose not to serve Jehovah, those who choose to do the things that is against his will, against his law, everyone is going to be judged. So this is the time that how long it's going to take when he's going to act everything is according to his time not mine not anybody else's not it's according to his time but before jehovah do anything even in bible history he has always sent messengers he has always made an announcement that this is what's going to happen and basically those who pay attention will pay attention those who want to be saved those who want to be healed those who genuinely want to know and serve him that's what he does he seek them out uh, and it's so many different examples of individuals who live immoral lives who were all the bad things that jehovah rejected and they made a decision and they displayed faith and because of their faith they were saved so i'm talking <laughs> so basically um yeah it it come down to the fact of what a person decides to do now what a person decides to do in the future and continues to do because if you you can be a person who's doing everything under the sun and you hear the message and you believe and you decide to stop all that stuff change do whatever and based on what you in your heart and based on what it, I'm not to judge. Whatever Jehovah decides, it go from there. So, basically, that's that's the message. <laughs> so when I said the whole thing was, I was coming on here to talk about tattoos and stuff, right? Right. Get back on track. Okay. So the whole obligation. <laughs> is to serve Jehovah from the heart, right? So that was the issue and always have been the issue. Even Jehovah's people, like they would go off and he would serve other gods, the nation of Israel, all of them. They, he had those who, you know, would take the lead and those who served them from the heart. He had kings and all these different individuals who were also good examples. And then you had those that were bad examples. But the majority of the people would go off and serve false gods. And so when they served these false gods and they made these alliances and these um, marriage alliances with the people who did not serve Jehovah, they taught their children to serve these false gods. And... <laughs> When they did this, they forgot about Jehovah, or they only served Jehovah in part. And Jehovah required exclusive devotion. So Jehovah was basically kept getting tired of the people, kept getting tired of the people. And so he would leave the people as a whole and help, or basically, yeah, help a select few. So. And those were the ones who served him from the heart or made changes. Is this loud out here today? Okay, so back to the tattoos, right? And y'all look, I got all types of notes and different things or whatever. So the first part, <laughs> the first part is we go to the book of Deuteronomy. Right, and so Deuteronomy 14 1. 
and like at one time too like um i think it was three years ago i had completely shaved all my hair off i shaved my head and so like in my mind i was thinking like you know the bible says something about a woman putting a razor to her head and all those things and not having hair and so like i had this uh what is it like i was conscious about it and i felt some kind of way because i had shaved my head but my hair i had hair issues and other issues that i needed to work out for myself and for me that's how i approached it so okay deuteronomy 14 1. it says you are sons of jehovah your god do not cut yourself or shave your foreheads ball for a dead person for you are the holy people to jehovah your god and jehovah has chosen you to become his people his special property out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth so jehovah had chose israel right now in connection with that I have a reference and that reference is sent me to Leviticus and Leviticus 20 I'm gonna read verses uh, I'm gonna start at verse 2 but matter of fact you know what Leviticus chapter 20 I'm gonna start at verse 1 and I'm just gonna read down some and it says Jehovah went on speaking to Moses saying you are to say to the Israelites any man of Israel and any foreigner who resides in Israel who gives any of his offspring to Molech should be put to death without fail the people of the land should stone him to death I myself will set my face against that man and I will cut him off from among his people because he has given some of his offspring to Molech and has de uh, and has defiled my holy place and has profaned let's see. and I will cut him off from among his people because he has given some of his offspring to Molech and has defiled my holy place and has profaned my holy name if the people of the land should deliberately close their eyes to what the man does when he gives his offspring to Molech and they do not put him to death, then I myself will certainly set my face against that man and his family. I will cut off that man from his people along with all who join him in prostituting themselves to Molech. As for the person who turns to the spirit mediums and the foretellers so as to commit spiritual prostitution with them, I will certainly turn against that person and cut him off from his people. So here we see that from the reference from Deuteronomy, and it took us to Leviticus, is talk about Molech. And you can look up Molech. Molech is a false god or a deity. And the people, they would sacrifice their children to Molech. And that was a big issue because they were killing their offspring and giving them to Molech. And also it talked about the spirit mediums. How basically they did not have the basic the authority or permission to be practicing the things that they were practicing so uh it, it ties into the spirit sons who were kicked out of heaven which many refer to as fallen angels and we just say they're demons because they it's a form of worship that's what it comes down to it's a form of worship and so with that worship that's also to where the different images 
um, come in if you continue to read. I, it's the small books of the Bible, like them hidden books of the Bible. I ain't gonna say hidden because they're not hidden, but you know, they're the books that we really don't. I don't know. They, I, I, maybe I'm speaking for myself, but basically, like, they're easily skipped over or not read as often. And it talks about those who, oh, man, it, it talks about a lot of stuff. It's a lot. It, man, the Bible has so many hidden gems and different things. So, hold on. Let me see, because I had wrote it down. And you know what? I'm going to go back to Leviticus, and I'm going to look up the scriptures in connection with Leviticus. Uh, in regards to the tattoos because that's what I had looked up <laughs> so that I'll see and I hate when I do that because I be reading and I be doing research and everything and it's like I just, I write it down, but then I go through so many scriptures and I be reading for so long and just learning. And so I get excited. Then it's like, oh, you're going to go online and talk about it. And it's like, oh, dang, like you didn't write down each and every scripture. And it's like, it's so many to look through, but I do go through them. <laughs> so <laughs> my bad, y'all, my bad. I don't know. I think maybe, um... I'll try and find a better way to, like, just have any writing and everything. Maybe I edit the videos afterwards and, you know, put on the video the actual scriptures that you can look up and go to to read it. Okay. So, hold on. In Leviticus, okay, I ain't go to verse 27. Okay. In verse 27 and verse um, Leviticus 20. And verse 27 says, any man or woman who acts as a spirit medium or is a foreteller should be put to death without fail. The people should stone them to death and their own blood will be upon them. Okay, so we're not like in a time right now where we go and we stone and kill anybody for any of those things. But because of basically a spiritual prostitution. And that has not changed. Jehovah still does not like that. It's, it's, it's basically dibble-dabbling and playing with demons. So anyone who actually know anything about demons and um, all those things, the, it, it gets off into some stuff. But demons are stronger than humans and because they are demons they basically in a sense you can say basically torture people um different things is spiritual prostitution it's enmity with god basically you cannot be in the mix with false religion and false worship and false gods and doing the things that Jehovah disapproves of and still have a relationship with him. That's the best way to put it. You you can't be dibble dabbling and messing with those things and have a good relationship with Jehovah, with the true God. So that's why also when it comes to false religion, He's going to settle all these things. It's going to be settled. And those that practice those things, that have those things, who hold on to those things, uh, who practice witchcraft, all those things, he's personally going to deal with them. He's personally going to remove all those things. So i i say it all the time when it comes to jehovah's judgment when jehovah do it that's it it's not it's not a man it's not you know some he 
is his judgment. And his judgment is different from something that is a trial or a test or something that just happens. You know, so let me look back at this scripture because specifically I said tattoos, right? Okay, so. Boom, boom, boom. And also, too, like the practice of cutting and everything, like, um, people they in their false worship they would cut themselves as well um you can look that up and see that with um uh, elijah uh how they were at the altar and elijah asked them you know who is the true god prove i i'll prove that jehovah is the true god and you know you call on your gods and you prove that your god is the true god and so, you know, of course, their guys wouldn't answer and do all those things. So after a time, but they was cutting themselves, stabbing themselves, doing all those things. And all those practices and things were considered sacrifices to their gods, which is sacrifices to demons. So, you know, cutting yourself and all those things, those are things that are harmful to the body is... Um, defilement of the flesh that's the best way to put it it's defilement of the flesh so because we are vessels and because we are created the body was created with love and as such jehovah want us to take care of ourselves he want us to take care of our bodies so that's something else to consider you know when you decide if you personally want to do tattoos or piercings and things of that nature and personally i just do like the nose clip or whatever when i want to but everybody have their own reason and their own whatever so again um and then also too like it talks about you know um food and the things that they were eating uh, as part of the Mosaic law as far as you know what was considered clean and unclean and I'm gonna show y'all that real quick it, uh, it's uh, I talk too much y'all I'm sorry <laughs> and see and you know what this time I think I really am going to just write it down like step by step every scripture I look at and what it is because when I looked at it specifically on tattoos. I think it was two scriptures specifically. And those two scriptures were basically for them not to get tattoos. And then the next one, uh, basically, it was tied to another false god. So the basically for them not to be, you know, getting tattoos uh, for of the faces and um, things of a dead person and everything so when you think of it in that sense too it was a form of mourning and also it was tied to false gods so a lot of it had to do with what they were practicing at that time and the gods that they were worshiping so that's the main reason why jehovah disagreed with it and he told them not to do it because of the practices of that time so uh, I hate that I didn't write down the exact scripture because going through each scripture and everything from the paragraphs and everything I have to look and see exactly let me see let me try F let me see Deuteronomy chapter 17 yeah I'm gonna prepare this better next time because I understand it so I just be talking and telling it but you know it, sometimes it's better for you to be able to look it up and see it for yourself as somebody's talk about it and you understand it so Okay, that's about investigating the matter and them being put to death. Let's see. And yeah, 17, 2, and 3. Let's see. Mm. 
and it also it gives like different cases of like very just various situations to in a judgment that was given at the time so okay maybe i just when i find it later i'll look it up later and i'll make a separate post about it just the two specific scriptures of exactly what i'm talking about but this is the other thing to another example of what they was practicing at the time and what they were doing and some scriptures have parallels they have parallel meanings um it have a meaning for that time period and a meaning for the time period that was later on in our time period as well so in this case um in Deuteronomy chapter 14, it says, You must not eat anything that is detestable. These are the animals that you may eat. And they give a list from there on what they may eat and what they may not eat, right? But what I realized, too, because I was reading in Genesis, and this was after the flood of Noah's day. And after the flood of Noah's day, uh, it is Genesis chapter 9, right? And in Genesis chapter 9, in verse 3, it says, Every moving animal that is alive may serve as food for you, just as I gave you the green vegetation, I gave them all to you. Only flesh, wit is life, is blood, you must not eat. Besides that, I will demand an accounting for your life blood. I will demand an accounting from every living creature, and from each man I will demand an account for the life of his brother. Okay, so, you no, know, the Mosaic Law also teaches that, you know, you must not murder. And... Let's see. So then, from there, we have, in Genesis, after the flood, they could eat. They said, I just read it, right? In Deuteronomy, which is later on, they have a list of what they could eat and what they couldn't eat. And so then, later, in the far future, because during Jesus' time and everything, we know that Jesus actually established the new covenant. And so, in that time period, we have his apostles. And his apostles, among them, was the apostle um, Peter. Now, the scriptures uh, talk about how it was, it was parallel. Because... When Jesus came and established the new covenant, people had to adjust. They had to understand what really happened and what it really meant by Jesus offering himself as a sacrifice and how that changed things. So in that change, that had to do with um, basically what they were allowed to eat and what they were not allowed to eat. And the reason they wasn't allowed to eat it is because those foods were considered sacrifices to idols, which is false gods, which is the demons. So those who could now eat those foods under the new covenant, if they ate them, then people would be judging them. The congregation, individuals would be judging them. Um, because they decided to eat or because they decided not to eat. Now, also in line with the new covenant was basically the allowance of people who were not Jews also being able to accept Jesus as their savior and join a congregation and become a part of the anointing. And that was different for them as well because 
there were all sorts of people. So in that time period, they had to make that adjustment. So when um, it's the story of the Ethiopian eunuch, how um, basically the angels were sent to Peter and he was sent out to go message and help the eunuch to understand what the scrolls or the scriptures were saying to help him get a better understanding so that, I'm sorry, he could dedicate his life and his, um, yeah, dedicate his life to serving Jehovah. Um, so he had to get baptized. And yeah, so all that, it's the Bible talks about um, basically anyone who is willing to serve Jehovah and love Jehovah is acceptable to him. Jehovah is not partial. Jehovah doesn't look at a person race, a person, he, he doesn't, it's not just Jews and Gentiles and Greeks. It's anyone who is willing to serve Jehovah from the heart is acceptable to him. And basically through what he decides, he decides who is anointed and who is going to live forever on earth. And then it's a lot of people that's going to be resurrected. And in that resurrection is going to be the resurrection of judgment and the resurrection to life. So, you know, people may think, oh, what you do don't matter. It, it does. It does. <laughs> that's the best way to say it. It does. Um even some that have died, like the Bible do teach that death is, uh, it paid the cost of those sins, but some will still be judged according to what they did. So even though sin does, death does pay that price, that's the reason they'll be resurrected because they'll have to prove that if they were a bad person, but they died, they'll have to prove that they want to live and learn according to Jehovah's standards. And that will be the determination. If they decide, nah, you know, living in paradise according to God's rules and laws, I'm not about that life, then that's going to be their judgment. They're going to die, the permanent death. That's the second death. So, back to <laughs> the food, right? So, um, go to 1 Timothy chapter uh, 4. And again, like uh, how I talk about consulting, just talked about consulting spirit me mediums and foretellers of events and things of that nature. Um the Bible also teach that a lot of false prophets will arise as well. So, it's a lot to pay attention to. So, however, the inspired word clearly says that in later times, some will fall away from the faith, paying attention to misleading, inspired statements and teachings of demons. By means of the hypocrisy of men who speak lies, whose conscience is seared as with a um, branding iron. They forbid marriage and command people to abstain from food, uh, to abstain from foods that God created to be partaken of with thanksgiving by those who have faith and accurately know the truth. For every creation of God is fine and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified through God's word and prayer over it and so this is in uh, first Timothy and this is chapter 4 so it talk about you know basically how because of Christ's death and establishing the new covenant things that 
they were doing in the old covenant some of them are obsolete and also like in the old covenant uh i think it's over 600 mm, over 600 um commands when really in reality jehovah had moses right on the tablet the ten commandments and so understanding those commandments is based off of those principles and being able to have discernment and have a clean conscience and those who love jehovah like certain situations when you encounter them and you see them if you're relying on jehovah if you're if you really have a relationship with jehovah you're studying his word and you're doing the things pleasing to him you're going to know automatically like no that's not something that i need to do that's not what i need to do so like the old covenant them having those all those commands and everything the people couldn't keep up with all them commands they couldn't do all that they had all these animal sacrifices they had so much and it was weighty basically so by it being weighty that's the reason why jesus came and also basically eliminated that because it worked to show that as humans we have so many sins we sin all the time we have so many things that so many imperfections that separate us or keep us from being able to have a relationship with Jehovah. And that's the whole point. The whole obligation of man is to have a relationship with Jehovah. So the law was to basically make everything seen so that people could ask for forgiveness and build and have that relationship with Jehovah. So when jesus came and he established the new covenant basically what that did is eliminate the old covenant with its laws and its rules and basically to serve off of those principles to understand that the old covenant is not that you know how can i say like back to tattoos you know even though it's nothing wrong with tattoos specifically because the reason it was considered wrong is because they were serving false gods and basically what the people were doing at that time and dealing with spirit mediums and things of that nature and everything that's why they were told not to do it because they were practicing those things so I don't know what individuals practice and stuff like that and everything, but, and I don't know, we ain't getting, any, whatever, I'm talking. Okay, so the whole point is, it was based on those principles. So now, the new covenant and everything, like things that, oh man, it's, it's so much. <laughs> like little simple things that they would do, it wasn't about, them doing it it was about worship it was about false worship and them being involved with false gods that's the best way to put it so in today's time and date most people who get tattoos and things of that nature they're not getting them because they're giving homage to a false god or things like that if you are then that's for you to discern and figure out um but basically you know just stick to the principles of knowing what you're doing knowing that you know what you're putting on your skin uh it affects your skin knowing what you're doing what you're involved in what the consequences of it is and if that's something that you really want to do and a reason that you want to do it so yeah that's i'm gonna talk for a while <laughs> i'm gonna get better i'm gonna do better i'm gonna do better but if you stuck around this long um thank you i hope y'all 
is helping I, I hope is um, beneficial to you and basically that's it um pray over your food whatever you choose to eat um it is is here and also uh again um with the example of the apostle peter he had got counsel because he was mistreating individuals in the congregation uh, because like, before he like he was sitting with them and he would congregate with them and then because he wanted to basically impress uh, other members of the congregation that he hung with before he started treating them different so those who were not considered Jews, I, I'm not reading it, so don't quote me on it, but basically, um, because he was mistreating them based on the old law and the old covenant, he got counseled on it because he had to make that adjustment and discern that these individuals, even though they weren't originally um members of the congregation that the way had been opened up for them to become members of the congregation and have the privilege of being anointed just as he was and so for them to treat each other with love and the bible also says that visionaries prophets all those things they will be done away with but the one thing that will remain is love so that's what the whole law is about the whole law of the bible is to love jehovah your god with your whole heart your whole soul your whole mind and to love your neighbor as yourself so in order to love someone as yourself you first have to understand what loving yourself means and also loving jehovah because certain things with loving jehovah you're not going to do to yourself therefore you're not going to do to your neighbor so you have to learn to love yourself and everything in this world right now everything in this system uh, a lot of it teaches us how to not love ourselves how to not love others and basically to mistreat each other so it is adjustment is really a process you know to really let love be the guiding force to let love be what influence your actions and you know having a fruitage of the spirit um and it, it's it's not easy it's not easy at all and that's why you know people say that you have to be a warrior to be kind in today's society because a lot of people are not kind a lot of people are not considerate a lot of people are not patient um and again a lot of it too have to do with that demonic influence and not to say that you know oh because someone is being unkind or you know in a mood or something or whatever they have a demon or anything like that no i'm not talking about judging people like that but basically just it's a reality It's a real reality that you know people are practicing things that is harmful to them and others and it's being no let known is being put out in everything like even people who are making videos about you know the egyptian gods and you know the ancestry and things of that nature even if all that is true all the things they're presenting about these gods is recognizing that where is it coming from you know what time period the bible speaks about all these gods and um and that's one thing that's interesting like for the most part the Bible, they took Jehovah's name out and replaced it with titles. But the false gods and everything, um, what's her name? Um, ooh, don't give me the line. But basically, um, 
Easter, you know, the different holidays, um, pagan holidays and things of that nature. They're attached to false gods and they just basically changed their names over the centuries and but they're the same gods that's it they just make a couple of tweaks here and there and everything and that that's it so i'm gonna just i'm, I'm gonna do better y'all i'm gonna do better i'm because look y'all i promise y'all i i be in this bible okay I even like <gasps> oh god look I started taking and I wrote down and like was dividing up the bloodlines of Ham Cham and Jophel and their families and where they were and with Nimrod and you know the land and all that stuff because i wanted to create a visual picture for myself and everything and it's a lot it's a lot and i'm just I, I feel like i'm absorbing so much information and learning so much and that's it like it, it's a lot but really it comes down to just understanding what the main point is and the reason for the things that were written so it just started pouring down raining um <laughs> so i'm gonna get off of here and i guess that's the big point and everything too like everything is to practice love um it doesn't mean that you don't have boundaries it doesn't mean that you know, you have to almost sacrifice yourself to be pleasing other people and things of that nature. No, but just act out of love, you know, consideration. Sometimes it takes, you know, freely forgive. Not sometimes, a lot of the times, you know, we have to freely forgive someone even though they did us wrong and leave it up to Jehovah, leave it up to him in prayer to fix it or correct it. And when you start doing those things and really actively striving to do all things for God's glory and not for men, you start seeing them move things and correcting things and just helping in your life. So that's it. <laughs> I'm going to find the scriptures exactly for the tattoos and I'm going to make a post for them and I'm going to put them on my page. So I'm going to leave it at that, y'all. Again, thank you for joining me. And I'll be back. And I'm going to create some stuff, some art stuff. I'll be back. <laughs> Take care.